Hey everyone, I'm Jeremy Payne, and I want to welcome you to That Was History. What are you doing? Hey guys, I'm Cliff Langston, and with my egg friend Jerry here, we are bringing you seven great stories from history that we pulled from the coming week. Hey, don't flip my screen. Have some common sense. This is the right way. No, it's not. Just roll the clip. And it was just like I demonstrated that Babe Ruth would get up to the plate and point to the outfield stands before hitting a home run. They called him the Home Run King. He started out, however, as a pitcher as he signed on with the minor league Baltimores and then he was later signed on for pitching for the Boston Red Sox. After his two World Series victories, he would be traded to the team he is most known for playing with and that would be the New York Yankees. It was here that he would become a full-time hitter and turn into the game's greatest star. If you're a baseball fan, or even if you're not familiar with baseball, you know that he's famous. But he was so famous that they had an entire day devoted to him on April 27th of 1947 known as Babe Ruth Day. This was to honor the sick Babe Ruth who had been diagnosed with terminal throat cancer, and near 58,339 fans attended to show him their support. An interesting fact about this is that just before the speech he started coughing, and there was fear that he might get choked up over the applause he had just received. But it was actually the news reporters and everyone else who got choked up over losing such an amazing player in baseball. And when he got up to give the speech at home plate, besides the crackly voice from the cancer that he had, he was confident in speaking to his fans. There's been so many lovely things said about me, and I'm glad that I've had the opportunity to thank everybody. Thank you. Give him away, Terry. Believe it or not, when I was in high school, I wanted to be a marine biologist. Obviously, that isn't the path I eventually decided to take, but I'm still fascinated with the ocean and the creatures that live underneath the surface. Do you remember that moment when Dory and Marlin ran into this guy? Fish that live in the depths like this one are the types that most intrigue me. One such creature that has piqued my interest in recent years is the colossal squid, a mysterious creature that swims in the deep freezing waters around Antarctica. We don't know much about these guys, but on April 28th of 2008, a fully intact colossal squid carcass was found. It was 34 feet long and weighed half a ton. This body has since been dissected to better understand this rare animal. Even more recently, I was excited to learn that we have finally captured footage of a living giant squid. There's a difference between it and the colossal squid mentioned earlier, but it is still amazing footage and both discoveries are further developments in understanding these giants of the seas. When you think about it, do you know where rubber actually comes from or why it's even named such? Well, caoutchouc or rubber dates all the way back to being first used by the Indians of Central and South America. It was a natural substance that had been used for centuries before being rediscovered by Columbus and then introduced to Western culture. Caoutchouc comes from the Indian word kahuchu, which actually means weeping wood. This natural rubber was harvested from the sap that oozed out of barks of trees. The name we know it as today, rubber, came from it being used to rub out pencil marks, which is actually why it's called rubber today. The actual patent would not come out until April 29th of 1813, and to this day we use rubber in many different materials. There are tires, rubber bands, elastic fabrics, rubber soles for your shoes, and even balloons that we have today. So now when someone asks you about rubber, you can amaze them and tell them that you actually know that the name is caoutchouc and dates all the way back to the Indians. One of the main reasons that World War II will forever be remembered is because of the Holocaust. This was a mass murder of approximately 6 million Jews by the Nazi party headed by none other than Adolf Hitler. Approximately two-thirds of the total Jewish population living in Europe would be dead by the end of this horrible genocide. From this event, we all were introduced to the diary of a young girl on April 30th of 1952. Written by Anne Frank, she tells the story of her family's two-year attempt to hide from the Nazis who were occupying the Netherlands. Unfortunately, she would die from typhus in the Bergen-Belsen concentration camp. Her father, Otto, was the only one to survive this camp. Anne Frank's diary was found and given to him and has since been published in more than 60 languages. This book has become one of the most popular books in the world and is included in most schools' recommended reading lists today. 
So in every school, if it's not a science exhibition, then I'm sure that there are several times when projects have been displayed in this sort of way. Tables are set up for any and all that want to see. It could be a simple poster all the way to something dealing with science. On a bigger scale though, the greatest exhibition of this world would open on May 1st of 1851 called the Great Exhibition. This event would have more than 10,000 exhibitors set up along an 8 mile stretch of tables. Different technological wonders from around the world were on display, but the exposition was clearly dominated by Britain, who was the premier industrial nation and workshop of the world. Conceived by Prince Albert, husband of Queen Victoria, the Great Exposition was a rousing success, hosting 6 million visitors before it closed in October. Many of the things that you could see here would include things from kitchen appliances, false teeth, silks, and even farm machinery. They had it all. As you are probably aware, when it comes to defeating the British, the American rebels needed all the help that they could get during the American Revolutionary War. A popular tactic in war is to form alliances to increase your military strength. But what would you do when you're a ragtag group of rebels fighting against a well-trained and developed British militia and navy? If you are smart, you form an alliance with an enemy of the British crown. Who better than Spain and France though, right? Both of those potential allies suffered at the hands of Britain in the Seven Years' War that ended in 1763. This was a time of colonization and discovery for these three countries, and everyone was worried that Britain was becoming too powerful. On May 2nd of 1776, Spain and France would both donate arms to the American rebels. This display of support would eventually grow until Spanish and French troops were completely involved in the Revolutionary War's outcome. Without their support, the outcome might have been completely different and Britain could have possibly grown into the powerhouse that everyone feared. During a war, you would not think that crimes would be committed because everyone is fighting for the war and a good outcome on their country's behalf. Well, you would be wrong if you have this perspective. In Japan on May 3rd of 1946, the war crimes trials would begin. The international military tribunals for the Far East would start conducting trials for those military and government officials accused of committing war crimes and crimes against humanity during World War II. At the end of the trial, seven are sentenced to death, including Hideki Tojo, the premier of Japanese army, a man who organized the rake of Nanking, and an officer who brutalized Allied prisoners during the war. Along with all of these, 16 others are sentenced to a life of imprisonment. That's a wrap for this episode of That Was History. As usual, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed our little flip-flop segment in the intro, be sure to send us your funny idea for our next episode. You can send us your comments or tweets at the links provided below. If you haven't done so, be sure to hit that subscribe button off to your right. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next week.